in the last lecture we have been talking about Shannon entropy which is basically a classical information system which tells me what is the optimal compression that I can get and if just to summarize what we said is supposing we have a random variable x corresponding to a physical process which has possible outcome which has possible outcomes x1 x2 up to xm with respective probabilities p1 p2 up to pm subject of course to some over probability being equal to 1. We said that the average uncertainty associated with the event is what is called as a Shannon entropy and has an expression which is sum over i p i logarithm of p i. We mentioned that traditionally it is conventional to take the base of the logarithm to be equal to 2. The second point that we notice is that this definition does not depend upon the value that the uh, random variable takes but rather on, than on probability with which a particular event occurs. We also said that Shannon entropy gives a lower bound on the uncertainty associated with an event and if the length of a uniquely decipherable prefix code happens to be n i with a probability p i then the length of the word should be greater than or equal to the Shannon's probability function f. What von Neumann did is to generalize this to the case of quantum systems and he did it by an argument which we will not go to. But what happens is like Shannon entropy characterizes uncertainties of classical events, von Neumann entropy provides a measure of our ignorance or uncertainties of the quantum system. Like in Shannon's case, the situation that we look at is not that of a pure system, but of an ensemble described by a density metric rule. We have had quite a bit of a discussion on the properties of the density matrix and we have said if I have an observable A, the expectation value of the operator A is given by trace of A with rho where rho is the density matrix and the density matrix has a property that trace of rho is equal to 1. For a pure system we had seen that rho square must be also equal to rho. So, von Neumann entropy S rho provides a measure of the degree of mixedness in an ensemble. So, firstly I require for a pure system like in case of Shannon entropy for a pure system S of rho must be equal to 0. Von Neumann took his cue from Shannon's discussion of entropy and he defined the entropy which now carries his name as equal to minus, remember it was minus sum over i p i log p i. So, this is minus trace of rho log rho and as before I can take the base of logarithm what I want. but the as I said that traditionally we will take the basis two. So, let us look at what are the properties of a system like this. First thing is since entropy must be independent of the basis in which you are calculating because it is a trace. So, therefore, 
I could go over to a representation in which rho is diagonal and then my s of rho would then be given by minus sum over i lambda i log lambda. There are few properties of this which we will discuss. So, of course, from the definition it becomes clear that your s of rho is equal to 0 for a pure system and the reason is the following. If you take s of rho to be equal to minus sum over i lambda i log lambda i, recall that for a pure system one of my lambda i must be equal to 1 and all others 0. So, therefore, I get minus 1 log 1 minus 0 log 0, but 0 log 0 is to be understood in as a limit which is equal to 0. So, therefore, for a pure system maybe a particular lambda i equal to 1 for specific i and is equal to 0 for everything else. So, therefore, s of rho is equal to 0. That is one property which we wanted and that is fine. Now, what is the maximum value of the integral? This uh, requires a detailed mathematical proof. I will not go through it, but since I said, I will give you an intuitive idea which is a very simple thing to understand. Since we said that entropy is a measure of the degree of mixedness in the system, supposing I am in d dimension, if I am in d dimension, then if there are d number of non-zero eigenvalues, now obviously the maximum mixedness comes for the case where each of the d eigenvalues is equal to 1 by d and that is because the sum of the eigenvalue of the uh, density matrix must be equal to 1 because trace of rho is equal to 1. So, therefore, I must have the s of rho maximum to be given by log of d. There is another property which is valid for a bipartite system. Multi qubit systems we have discussed and so what we are saying is this that entropy for a composite system rho a b is less than or equal to s of rho a plus s of rho b. Once again, I will not be proving these, but I will illustrate them their validity by some example. The equality holds if my rho a b for the multi qubit case or two qubit situation in this case is rho a rho b factorized. Now, you can see why this at least should be true. So, we know that for pure states the eigenvalues of the density matrices are identical with one of the values being equal to 1 and all others being equal to 0. Just rho a and rho b must have their same eigen. So, therefore, be equal. This is the standard mixing theorem that is when you mix the system S A and S B, the S of rho A B becomes less than or equal to 0. As I said, there will be very few uh, 
rigorous proof I will give for the von Neumann entropy. Let me give you a few examples for this. Consider a pure state rho. So, I know that the eigenvalues are 1 and 0. So, supposing I go over to a representation in which it is diagonal. So, obviously, this is what it is. So, I know of course, S of rho equal to Now, consider a state psi which is equal to 1 over square root of 2, 0 plus 1. Remember the diagonal states that we have talked about. So, my rho here, since this is a pure state, is psi psi, and this is equal to if I go over to the matrix representation, I have 1 over square root of 2 twice appearing, so it is 1 by 2. Remember that 0 is 1 0 and 1 is 0 1. So, the corresponding bras are 1 0 rho etcetera. So, I get 1 0 plus 0 1 which is nothing but 1 1. And uh, this is of course 1 1 because it is just the diagonal basis which then is half if you multiply these two you get 1 1 1 1. So, you can see immediately that the eigenvalues of this matrix will be 1 and 0. So, once again S of rho is equal to But consider a mixed state. For example, the maximally mixed state. The maximally mixed state, which we have discussed several times, has supposing rho is equal to half 0, 0 half. So, S of rho you can see immediately log to the base 2 of half minus half log to half minus half log to half. So, that adds up to 1. So, this is equal to simply log 2 of 2 which is equal to 1. Now, let me give you an illustration of that inequality that I talked about. Let us consider the following situation. Consider a state which is cos theta 0 0 plus sin theta 1 1 to cubic square. Well, since this is a pure state, I can immediately calculate what is the entropy of these two states and find out that the entropy is equal to 0. So, let us look at what happens to my rho here. So, in this case look at what is rho a. I feel like this is my bit a, this is my bit b. Remember how I calculate rho a. I calculate rho a by taking a partial trace over b of rho a b. And, and what is rho a b? Rho a b is simply this cat multiplied by the corresponding bra. So, let us write down rho a b is equal to cos theta. 0 0 plus sin theta 1 1 multiplied by cos theta bra 0 0 plus sin theta bra 1 1. So, I can write down this 
as equal to cos square theta 0 0 0 0 plus sin square theta 1 1 1 1 plus cos theta sin theta 0 0 1 1 plus 1 1 0 0. Now, if I take a trace of let us say B, remember what we said. So, B is this second bit. We said that when you take a trace of a cat followed by a bra, all that you get is the product of the bra with the cat, the inner product of bra with the cat. So, if I am taking a trace, I am going to get equal to cos square theta 0 0 the b gets traced out but i have a 0 here and a 0 here so that i get 1 plus sin square theta 1 1 these terms will give me 0 because when i am taking a trace over b i have trace of 0 1 which is the scalar product of 1 with 0 or in this case with 0 with 1 both of them become equal to 0. So, if I now, now that I have got a 1 qubit situation, I can express rho A which is by this. So, this is nothing but cos square theta and sin square theta. which is of course a proper density matrix because you can see that the row A adds up to 1. So, what happens to my entropy in this case S of A? So, my S of A is the eigenvalues since it is already in a diagonal form, eigenvalues are cos square theta sin square theta. So, I get S of A is equal to cos square theta minus sign in front of it logarithm of cos square theta minus sin square theta logarithm of sin square theta which is equal to so recall what what is it that i am doing here this is nothing but two log cos theta. So, I get minus 2 cos square theta log cos theta minus 2 sin square theta log sin theta now I will obviously get a similar expression identical expression when I consider rho b which is obtained from rho a b by tracing out a because the expressions were absolutely symmetrical there is no reason to expect that my s b would be any different. So, my s b will also be minus 2 cos square theta log cos theta minus 2 sin square theta log sin theta. And so, therefore, my S A plus S B, when I just add them up, I get minus 4 cos square theta log cos theta plus sin square theta log sin theta. Remember the cos theta and sin theta are less than 1. So, the logarithm turns out to be negative, but there is a minus sign in front of it which will make it greater than 0. But 
the pure state rho AB, the entropy was 0. So, the that sort of tells you that the entropy of the mixed state is less than the sum of the entropies of the two component pure state. Having done this, we would proceed to the quantum communication. I would not have time to discuss the reason why von Neumann entropy became significant for quantum communication because a theorem very similar to the Shannon entropy case for noiseless coding is applicable for the compression of quantum coding. There are many uh, theorems, parallel theorems for quantum systems, but that would take us outside the scope of this course. And in the next lecture, I will be talking about different protocols for quantum communication.